Today's video is all about getting a really, really good latch to help you with your breastfeeding journey. Now, all four of my kids were indeed breastfed and I love breastfeeding. It was incredible. That said, it was not easy in the beginning, especially with my first baby. So I am here to help you with eight tips to get that great latch. My first tip, try to be relaxed. Now it sounds simple, but we know it ain't that simple, is it? That pressure to breastfeed for new parents is so intense. It is everywhere, isn't it? Breast is best early breastfeeding, all of those things are out there when you have a baby and that pressure to be successful at breastfeeding is really, really intense and it can have an impact on your success at being able to breastfeed because when you are frustrated or stressed out and that cortisol is high, baby can sense that and it's going to make it that much harder for them to learn how to breastfeed as well. And I tell everybody I deliver this, remember that breastfeeding a baby is never the same twice. No two babies are the same and no two breastfeeding experiences are the same. So if you struggled with your last baby and now you're looking to breastfeed this baby, you really have to try to shake that feeling of I failed with my last baby. P.S. You didn't fail. You did just fine. This is a new skill for you, but it's also a new skill for baby. Now, it's not something that comes naturally to anybody because the only time that you're going to breastfeed is after you have a baby. Baby. And if you've never had a baby, it ain't a skill that's going to come naturally. So it's going to take practice and it's going to take patience. And that's why I say to try to relax. The best way that I can think of to try to be relaxed is to try to latch your baby often so that you are not trying to latch a baby who is starving. When babies give you those first early hunger cues, they're going to move their head around. They're going to thrust their tongue out a little bit. They're going to maybe try to suck on their hands. Those are some early feeding cues, opening and closing their hands. Those are the times that you want to try to latch baby because they are going to be the most calm because they haven't gotten to that crisis point in their little baby minds yet. If you are trying to latch a baby who is ferociously hungry, they have that high pitched scream. They are shaking their head all over your breast, even though it's right there for them. They are flailing. They are doing whatever they can to get that breast and it's not going to be as easy and as successful. So if it is not going well, unlatch baby, take a big breath and try, try again. My next tip is to stay hydrated and to have really nice, high caloric, nutritious snacks everywhere in your house. When I was breastfeeding, I had water bottles everywhere. My partner was like, why are there so many water bottles? It's because anywhere that I fed baby, I wanted to have a water bottle readily handy so that that visual cue of seeing it triggered me to drink water as I was feeding my baby. You need to up your hydration to be able to produce that breast milk and Breastfeeding parents, you need an extra four to 500 calories on average every day to help you to maintain your breast milk supply. Hydration everywhere and snacks everywhere is a big key. Tip number three is to get a nice supportive breastfeeding pillow or to always have lots of pillows nearby you. Most of us, when we are learning how to breastfeed, we instinctively will bring our bodies to baby because that feels easier in the beginning. However, that's going to lead you to have what I call breastfeeding shoulders. They're really shoulders that are very sore and tight because we're always hunched over our baby and our shoulders are up in our ears because we're trying to hold baby and get comfortable. If you have a supportive breastfeeding pillow or many pillows around you, it then becomes a lot easier for you to support baby in a nice supportive position while being able to sit upright and comfortable and not worrying about baby being supportive. So have one or two, have them around. And my biggest tip, and I always say to pack this in your hospital bag, is to bring your breastfeeding pillow with you to the hospital. It will make attempts at early breastfeeding much, much easier because the pillows in the hospital, they're pretty much the width of envelopes. They are not supportive at all. Having that breastfeeding pillow there will help you to get that success you're looking for. Tip number four, make sure your baby has a wide open mouth before they latch onto the breast. If you remember anything from this video, I want it to be this. We are breastfeeding. We are not nipple feeding. Did you get it? Because I'll say it again. Breastfeeding, not nipple feeding. If you put just the tip of your nipple in baby's mouth and they are sucking like this, it is going to leave you not only with poor milk production and poor emptying of the breast by the baby, it's going to leave you with raw, cracked, bleeding nipples that are very, very painful. And that is going to completely dismantle and discourage you from having a successful breastfeeding journey. I can say it firsthand. I wanted to quit because my nipples hurt so bad. So how do we get baby to 
open their mouth really wide before we latch them to the breast. We are gonna use a beautiful gift that nature provided us with. It's called a rooting reflex. And babies are born with this rooting reflex and they have it till about four to six months. This reflex is going to cause babies, if you take your nipple or even your finger and you rub it on their cheek or beside their mouth, their reflex is going to cause them to turn towards that nipple or finger uh, and they are going to open their mouth wide. And at that point, when their mouth is open nice and wide, then you can bring baby to the breast and latch. Now, take a look at this. When baby has their mouth just open a little bit and they are breastfeeding, look at how shallow that latch is and how shallow baby's nipple is in your mouth. Now, if I take baby's mouth and I open it wide, watch this. Now, look at how far back that nipple is in the mouth. And this is where the nipple needs to be for baby to feed efficiently and for your latch to be nice and deep. Do you know how far back uh, your nipple has to be in a baby's mouth for them to feed well? Take your tongue, run it back on your hard palate to where your hard palate meets your soft palate. That's how far back the nipple should go when feeding. Tip number five, ergonomics. We want baby to be in a straight line when they are feeding. What do I mean by that? I mean like their ear is over their shoulder, is over their hip, they're in a straight line. You don't wanna have babies um, head and mouth at your breast, but their body turned sideways like this. This is not gonna be great for breastfeeding. Really try to make sure that baby is in a nice straight line. And there are a few positions that you can utilize to feed baby that are gonna benefit you in different ways. And it's a really good idea for you to try them all out once you get a little bit more comfortable so that you can see which positions are best for your latch and for you and baby's comfort. This first position is definitely the most common and probably the easiest for new breastfeeding parents. It's called the cradle hold and the baby is going to go across your lap. This is the cross cradle. It's a slight variation of the cradle because you use the opposite arm to support baby's back and the opposite hand is under the head and neck, but the baby's still across your body. This position is really good for premature babies or babies having a hard time latching because this hand under their head gives you really, really good control of where their mouth and their latch is going and it leaves the other hand free to really manipulate your breast easily. The football hold has you holding your baby with one arm under your armpit and feeding on the breast on the same side that they're under. This football hold is really good for women with big breasts and it's also good for people with inverted nipples. Also a plus here, baby is no longer across your midsection, so it's a really good position for moms that have had a C-section. The sideline position has the baby laying in bed next to you with the breast that's down being the breast baby's feeding off of. This one is good if you are having pain sitting up, if you've had a bad vaginal tear, a swollen perineum, or a C-section recovery. Just be sure if you're sleepy with this position that you have somebody supervising or checking in on you as it can be dangerous to fall asleep with the baby next to you in bed. Then lastly, this laid back position is great for baby led nursing. In this position, the parent can lay flat on their back with their upper body supported by a pillow, and then baby lays on their tummy in the center of mom's chest with their head just above breast level and they'll search on their own for the breast and they'll latch with mom supporting their heads and shoulders. This one's a little bit different because you really have to be willing to give up control and let baby do the work. But it's a great position in recovery if you're fresh from a C-section. And it's also a great position for people who have an oversupply or a fast letdown because gravity makes it so that that milk does not come out as fast for baby. Tip number six is when you're latching baby, you wanna aim your nipple towards their chin in a downward direction instead of aiming it at their top lip or their nose. The reason for this is that when we apply that gentle pressure on their chin, it's actually going to force baby's mouth to open a little wider because we're putting the pressure here and it's forcing them to open their mouth. And then they actually have to, with their mouth, reach up and over the nipple to latch, which again, assists with that big open mouth. When we aim at the chin, it also ensures that the top of our nipple is pressed up against the roof of their mouth and the bottom of our nipple is sandwiched and nice and tight with baby's tongue. Tip number seven, while your baby is feeding, take a look at their lips. When you look, you should notice that their lips are flanged out like a fish, like this, okay? Their lips should be rolled up, flanged out like a hish, okay? Their lips should not be rolled under, tucked under on their gums like this, okay? Because if they are doing that, it is impossible for them to get a nice deep latch. When their lips are flanged out, 
that means that our breast is nice and close to their face, their nose and their chin is touching our breast, and we know then that our nipple is not alone in their mouth. Our areola has indeed joined the party, because remember, we are breastfeeding, not nipple feeding. And my last tip, if you're concerned about it, get your baby checked for a lip or a tongue tie. If they're severe enough, lip and tongue ties can really, really wreak havoc on your baby's ability to latch well. So what is a lip and a tongue tie? A tongue tie is when this tissue right here that connects your tongue to the lower part of your mouth is thick or short or malformed. And a lip tie is basically almost the same thing, but on the top. This piece of tissue right here, the frenulum that attaches your top lip to your gums, if it's short, tight, thick, it's also going to cause inability for them to freely move that upper lip. Some things you might notice if your baby does have a tongue or lip tie are difficulty breastfeeding or latching, making some clicking noises, while they're breastfeeding at the breast, excessive drooling or gumming at the breast or kind of chewing at the breast. Those are some things you might notice. If you wanna take a look yourself, you totally can. Remember to be very gentle with baby's mouth and also please ensure you have nice clean hands before you start. On the bottom, you can just simply gently swipe your finger kind of around the bottom palate there and it should pass freely. There shouldn't be any resistance when you're swiping and then take a look at it and inspect it. Does it look short? Does it look thick? Does it look malformed? On the top, very gently, you can just sort of try to do a bit of a lip flip. If you hit any resistance at all, it could very well be because of a lip tie. Please don't force this one at all. Very gentle motion there. And then take a look at it. Again, does it look short? Does it look malformed? Does it look like yours? Take a look at yours in the mirror. If you are suspecting it though, the best people to assess this are the experts in this area. The treatment for it, if it is indeed causing a problem with your lap, or with feeding is of course going to be clipping of the tongue tie. Two more bullets at the end here. First one, please bring baby to the breast. Don't bring your breast to the baby. This is a marathon, not a sprint. You are going to hurt your back and your shoulders if you are continually hunched over baby in a bad feeding position. So good posture, bring baby to your breast. They're portable. So they move around really, really well. And the second bullet is if you are struggling, please sooner than later, seek out the expert advice of a lactation consultant in your area. They are an incredible resource. I credit mine with my success in my breastfeeding journey. And have a look and listen to baby. Here's where we talk about what it looks and sounds like. Baby's ears should be maybe wiggling a little bit. You should be able to hear baby sucking and swallowing because that means that they're moving their mouth efficiently. In the beginning, it might be three or four sucks to a swallow. And then once your milk comes in, it should be suck, swallow, suck, swallow. Some babies have a very quiet swallow. So you might only hear them sort of stopping their breathing for a second while they swallow and then suck and then stopping their breathing for a swallow. That is great too. Now, baby should not be making any clicking sounds because if we're making a clicking sound, it basically means baby is breaking their own latch repeatedly. If you need to unlatch baby to relatch them, and that's fine, remember, practice makes perfect. What I want you to do, don't just pull baby off because your nipple is going with baby. What you wanna do is use your finger to slide it between your nipple and baby's mouth to break that seal and then remove baby and start again. And breastfeeding should not be painful. Now, that being said, when you first latch a baby, yes, it is going to feel a certain kind of way. Some people says it hurts a little bit. Some people say it just feels uncomfortable. Some people say it pinches. Whatever that is for you, that's fine. You have a human being on a breast and a nipple that has never had a human being on a breast or a nipple before, but it shouldn't be to the point where it is so painful you want to stop. Now, I hope you've enjoyed my special guests and maybe you have learned a few new tips or a bunch of new tips to help you along your breastfeeding journey. If you've liked this video, go ahead and give it that thumbs up. Consider subscribing me and joining me for some of my other videos. Check out this beauty and I'll see you in the next one.